I was very fortunate to get early access to the new iPad Pros, and I've been using them for a while now, and I have a lot of thoughts on them. I'm loving it, but I've got thoughts. This video is sponsored by Anchor. Let's get into it. This should come to no surprise to anyone that has been watching this channel for a while, but I've been using the 13-inch iPad Pro for everything. This is my main computer, and really the only computer I have and work from and read and do personal stuff and all that kind of stuff in between from. From the work side of things, this computer has been a beast. Uh, when it comes to photography, I've been able to open up massive RAW files and edit them incredibly quickly in Lightroom. Editing photos on this screen has just been amazing. The M4 chip is incredibly fast. The OLED display is beautiful. It just tackles everything, no problems. I don't really have anything bad to say about it because it can just handle it so well. Lightroom recently added the ability to for you to be able to paint out stuff in your images and it uses AI to replace it. So I took this image and I went in and I painted out all the people and the cars and stuff like that. And it did a great job at creating this photo that didn't have those people, didn't have those cars or anything like that. It just looked like an empty street, which this shot was in San Francisco and there is absolutely no way I would have been able to get this shot in San Francisco on an empty street like this. I've never seen my photos that I've taken look like this. The OLED screen on these iPads is just a whole nother level. I, it's, it's a little weird and kind of almost a little egotistical to say this, but like these images are beautiful. Yeah, I took them, but I, I just was like staring at them when I got this iPad Pro. I was just staring at these images on this screen because I've never seen them look like this. This isn't my first OLED display. I have an OLED TV. Uh, I have an iPhone 15 Pro, which has an OLED display. I have the OLED Nintendo Switch. This is not my first OLED display at all, but it's definitely the best. Interestingly enough, video editing is probably the biggest thing I do on an iPad. It's definitely the most intensive thing I do on an iPad. And it's been the thing that's changed very little because of these new iPads. Besides the display, which is obviously a big deal, but I'm not gonna keep harping on that. The M4 chip in the iPad Pro is significantly faster, but because we don't have the update that takes advantage of the M4 chip for Final Cut Pro for the iPad, it's just, kind of a little bit better. Final Cut Pro for the iPad, there's an update coming for it, but it's not out yet that'll optimize and will make rendering times and all that stuff be a lot better. But right now that's just not there. So while this is the most intensive thing I personally do on my iPad, it doesn't really change anything. Now, one thing I do want to point out with this upcoming update is it does bring external drive support to Final Cut Pro for the iPad. So you'll be able to edit projects and edit footage right from the external drive, which is nice for those people, but you will never ever catch me using it uh, because I got some trauma there from my film school days. Still, still processing that 15 years later. Now, another big thing I do on my iPad is writing. Writing on the iPad is great. Most of my writing is done in Obsidian, which is a uh, text editor. I didn't use Obsidian for a really long time on the iPad because it was not great on the iPad. It's gotten to be a lot better. It's still not a perfect native app by any means, but Obsidian's true power is its plugin support, and there's a really a lot of cool plugins. Yes, I'm still working on my Obsidian video. Problem was, new iPads came out, and then we have WWDC, so I'm only one person. I can only do so much, but it is coming. But plugins are a big feature when it comes to Obsidian. There's a lot you can do with the plugins feature with Obsidian. Obsidian is a very open app that you can do a lot with. Um, even stuff like theming. Uh, I took a theme called uh, Border. I customized it to match my Dark Knight theme from Drafts. I, there's so much you can do with this app to just really make it your own. Now, if you're one of those people that will just spend all of your time tinkering and not actually working, probably not a good app for you. But as far as my writing process goes, this feels good. Uh, the Magic Keyboard is obviously the biggest part of that. I like the new aluminum finish on the inside. I wish it was aluminum everywhere. I'm not sure how the rubber material is gonna hold up still. It didn't hold up on the last version. Maybe things have changed. I'm hoping things have changed, but that's gonna be something that only time tells. Like a month of usage isn't enough for me to be able to like, oh yeah, 
it's better now. Like it's going to be like a year down the road. Now I've just been working from the magic keyboard. Uh, I, I will say I miss my mechanical keyboards, but I wanted to give this the proper test. It still feels good. Like the keys don't feel bad, but they don't have as much travel as I would like. Uh, but with the aluminum finish, the Magic Keyboard is much closer to a laptop-like feel. It definitely feels a lot more premium. Uh, and I like the fact that the USB-C port on the side charges a lot faster than the previous generation one. This video is sponsored by Anchor. This is the Anchor 551 USB-C 8-in-1 tablet stand, a perfect companion for an iPad desk setup. At the top, there is the iPad stand. This can be lowered to draw on or raised up for a good working angle. It also has extra ports as well. Two USB-A ports at five gigabits per second, micro and standard SD card reader, headphone jack, HDMI that supports an external monitor at up to 4K at 60 Hertz, and a USB-C port that supports up to 100 watts of power delivery. This makes a great desk companion for any USB-C iPad. I've been using this in my studio for when I need to set up a workspace in here. It also folds down to be compact, which makes a great on-the-go travel companion. Speaking of travel companions, there is also the Anchor 541 USB Hub. This is a hub designed specifically with the iPad in mind. It has a headphone jack, micro and standard SD card slot, USB-A port, USB-C port with 60 watts of power delivery, and an HDMI port that supports up to 4K at 60 Hz. This is an incredibly light and compact hub, making it the perfect device to stick in your bag. This is the hub I'm traveling with now. I'm going to put links in the description below to where you can go check these out. My thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. Now, I don't draw or paint or really use my Apple Pencil for any of the stereotypical Apple Pencil stuff. Uh, I use my Apple Pencil for marking up documents. I get a ton of contracts and um, like review guides and like product guides and stuff like that. And I like to mark those up and highlight things I want to pull out. Um, you know, I'll edit them. I'll add signatures to contracts and stuff like that. And that's what I mainly use my Apple Pencil for. So for me personally, I could absolutely just get away with using the USB-C Apple Pencil with these new iPads. Uh, but the big benefit when it comes to specifically the new iPad Pros, because they support the USB-C Apple Pencil and the Apple Pencil Pro, is the Apple Pencil Pro has the charging while connected method. And I will always forget to charge the Apple Pencil because I don't use it a ton. So I like that method. The fact that it's always charged and ready to be used is worth it to me. Uh, for the extra, what is it, $50, I think, the $50 difference, that's probably worth it to me. But I can definitely see some people being like, eh, that's too much, especially with how much the iPads already are. I want to save some money. The USB-C pencil is not a bad way to go. When you get embargoed products, typically you only have about a week to do all of your testing, make your review, scripts, photos, videos, all the stuff that you're going to do, you typically only have about a week. So some stuff just gets forgotten about. So one thing I didn't talk about in my actual review of this device is just reading on it. Uh, I've spent a lot more time reading on this iPad Pro now, and I really like it. So Obviously, I read a lot of articles, tech articles, things like that, and I just hold the iPad in tablet mode like this. Uh, I've also been reading some books as well. I've been reading the High Republic series of Star Wars books uh, in preparation of the Acolyte show, which I'm very excited about. Should already be out by the time this video is out. But the thing I notice when reading on this iPad Pro is it's noticeably lighter. So the, despite the fact that it's the 13-inch iPad Pro, which is pretty big to hold in your hands, especially in portrait mode. It didn't feel cumbersome. It didn't feel like after a while it was getting annoying to hold. I was able to hold on to it. I was able to read my book. I was able to read articles and it was fine. It, it worked out just fine. The other thing I've been doing is reading a lot of comics on this. I've been subscribed to the Marvel Unlimited app for a while now, and I've just been going back and reading some old X-Men comics, some old Star Wars comics and stuff like that. The art in these comics just look amazing. Again, thanks to the OLED panel, well, and that and the artist, because the artist did a good job, but the OLED panel, like the colors look so good on it. I just, 
I could stare at this panel all day long. I know I'm harping on it. I really am trying not to, but I can't underscore enough. Like if you haven't seen one of these in person, go to the Apple store or Best Buy or whatever and go check it out. Or maybe don't because you might end up buying one if you don't want to spend that money. I would, I understand that. But using the 13 inch iPad Pro has become my favorite way to read comics because you're able to display the page the full size because it's the proper aspect ratio and size. So you can get the full comic page right there. I can get a nice, really beautiful image. The text is really crisp and clean. It's my favorite way to read comics now. My girlfriend's mom stayed with us for about a week or so and, uh, I didn't really want to hog the TV while she's here. Let's just say the shows I really want to watch are probably not shows she wants to watch, which is totally okay. So I've been using this iPad as my movie and TV watching device. Normally, I am a huge snob and I would never watch a movie on such a small display. Uh, TV shows maybe, but like movies, they're meant to be seen big and theatrical and with sound systems and all sorts of stuff. But... Uh, I watched like X-Men 97 on this. It was great. I loved it. It was fantastic. It looked beautiful on it. I also watched the Godzilla and Kong movie the other day. It looked great. Now, the issue is when it comes to movies, you're going to lose a lot of screen real estate because of aspect ratios, because of whatever aspect ratio a movie is in, it can swap, you know, whether it's 16 by 9 or 2 by 1 or whatever. But that being said, it still looked good. I've been using my AirPods Pro with it, which kind of gives you Dolby Atmos, sort of. It's not true Dolby Atmos. It kind of like fakes Dolby Atmos because you only have the two speakers, obviously. Uh, But it sounds really good. If I was in a situation where I was traveling and I just had my iPad and I really wanted to watch a specific movie or show or something like that, even as a movie snob, I wouldn't feel bad about using it on this iPad. It looks really good. It feels really good. I'm happy with it. Inspired by my friend Federico Vitici, I modified a GameSir controller to work with the 13-inch iPad Pro. I looked all over the place for a controller that supports... Uh, the 13-inch iPad Pro, like a handheld controller, they're kind of switch-like, and I couldn't find one for the life of me. But my friend Federico found this one. He modified it and made it work for this way. So I kind of followed his lead. I found a modification kit on Etsy that I ordered that kind of put, um, extended the panels a little bit and made it look really nice. I love this thing. It is great. So I've been playing a few local games on my iPad, but mostly what I've been doing is I've been using the Xbox game streaming service. Now, the Xbox game streaming service is fine by default. You have to use it as a web app because they haven't made a native app yet. Apple just started allowing these game streaming apps on the App Store. So when when a native app comes, it hopefully will be a lot better. But by default, it's a little it can lag quite a bit. So somebody recommended to me this script and you have to install an app. I'll put instructions and everything I mentioned in the description below so you can follow it along if you want. Uh, But basically somebody recommended the script to me and it kind of fixes a lot of issues with Xbox game streaming. And ever since I installed that and got that working, I've been playing Fallout 4 on my iPad and it works great. It feels amazing. I've had a couple of weird lag moments that just kind of hiccuped a little bit. It wasn't too terrible. I wouldn't play a really competitive game or a multiplayer game or something on this, uh, but a local single player game should work just fine if you use this script as well. But this basically gives me a giant Nintendo Switch with my iPad and I can play any of my Xbox games through the uh, Xbox Play Anywhere cloud streaming service thing, whatever they call it. They have like 10 different names. So since I've got the new iPad Pro, I haven't really touched my Vision Pro except to try the uh, Marvel What If experience. Uh, That was pretty cool if you haven't had a chance to try it. Go check it out. I think it's even free. Um, But the thing is, I love my iPad. It has all the apps I want on it. And that's not something I can say about Vision Pro. Vision Pro doesn't have Final Cut. It doesn't have a native Obsidian app. It doesn't have things that I want. Like it doesn't even have a good RSS reader. Like stuff that I really want isn't on Vision Pro yet. And I don't know if it's going to get it anytime soon. So I've just been using my iPad. 
the Vision Pro is kind of a whole to do when you want to use it anyways. You got to get it all set up. And then if you're going to work, you need a keyboard and trackpad. And oh, is it charged? Because the battery life doesn't last very long. And it's a whole thing. With my iPad, I just grab it and can go out to the living room and sit down and work. Or I can sit here and work or go to my desk or whatever. So that's been my experience using these new iPad Pros for the last few weeks, almost a month, a little bit shy of a month. Um, but yeah, that's been my experience using them so far. My thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.